welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a very laid back video. Um, and it's just going to be a sort of chatty video, a catch up video. I asked on Twitter were there things that you wanted me to talk about and I got lots of responses and I kind of have a list of things that I want to go on and talk about. Just before I start this video I would like to apologise and this time it is a genuine apology because I cannot do anything about it. I've shut all of my windows and I'm dying because it's 28 degrees in here. Um, but I don't know where it's coming from. It's not coming from the drive. I, we're getting our drive done today and I thought it was coming from the drive but it's not and it's not coming from the kitchen and we're getting our kitchen done. Someone somewhere is drilling, sawing, hacking something and it's really, really loud. I can't do anything about that. I have literally shut all my windows and as you can tell, I'm very sweaty. So, yeah. Also, I got my hair done. You're probably thinking, wow, your hair has been very bleached by the sun no like i got highlights so that's why it looks blonder and then obviously i went on holiday so right now my hair is pretty blonde like looking in the mirror i'm like what the hell um but it doesn't look as blonde on camera um and i'm wearing no makeup nothing like i just wanted to have a chill chatty video to catch up with you guys on things that i wanted to talk to you about but the first thing and this was like kind of the main thing that i've been getting comments about is like what's happening with your channels now that you're going to university so touch wood I should hopefully be going to Oxford or Edinburgh University in October or September again dependent on where I get in um, so I have been thinking about this and I'm not entirely sure what to do so this is where I need your advice so for me personally I feel like my main channel has kind of like not died but my audience there is not an active audience like everyone seems to have kind of moved over to this channel and this channel has kind of become my channel um, I've never seen that happen before someone moved from a bigger to a smaller channel but I prefer this channel I prefer the type of content that I put on it but at the same time I feel like the name is kind of limiting and it's like revision with Eve but I do want to do more stuff than revision on here I'm never going to go back to like beauty videos I don't think like favorites and stuff because it's just not me but I do want to do like videos related with travel and academics basically so do I just change the name of this channel and carry on on this channel but start putting up like travel vlogs uni vlogs like things like that so kind of more like jack edwards or grace fit uk but without the fitness sort of thing or do i carry on uploading those on my main channel but i kind of just want to have one channel where i put all of my content when i go to uni because i'm not going to have time to manage two three channels um i don't vlog very often so i don't use my vlogging channel i don't like vlogging personally like i will vlog sometimes but for me it's just not my sort of thing i don't really like doing it anymore it makes me really sort of down if i daily vlog i can vlog occasions and holidays but for me vlogging over long periods of time is just not for me so do, what do i do like i'm thinking do i change this channel name to eve bennett but then people are going to get confused because there's two eve bennett channels and they're like which one or can someone help me think of a better name to call this channel revision with eve because i don't mind it being called revision with eve but it's not all going to be revision content but I can't really change it to Eve Bennett because I already have that. And I don't fancy using my middle name because I don't like my middle name. It's Mary, by the way. Um, so, like, let me know if you could think of a better name for this channel. Or whether you think I should keep it with Revision with Eve or whatever. Let me know. But that is my current thought process. Don't really expect to see any videos on my main channel. See, I wouldn't even call it my main channel anymore. I'd say that this is my main channel. I enjoy uploading on this one. I enjoy the type of content that I'm putting on this channel more than i do on my other channel so yeah let me know um and also let me know what sort of videos you want to see from me over the summer because obviously it's not exam season and i'm also not preparing for uni until after results day so i kind of have this awkward period um i should be vlogging a few trips and things and whatever but i need your video input as to what you want me to film so that is everything like related to that that was all in my mind but i need you guys to comment down below with advice because i don't know what to do and you guys always give the best advice so please 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 comment down below the next one is the reason that i wanted to make this video anyway but it's sponsored videos so i got a lot of backlash on my last uni compare video for uploading two adverts in a row and i'm not going to sit here and apologize to you guys for uploading two adverts because you would not have a go at a waitress for working extra shifts you would not have a go at a lawyer for accepting a promotion or for doing extra seminars for extra money like you wouldn't okay so what really grinds my gears and it really does grind my gears is when youtubers like me who are doing honest sponsorships 
endorsing brands that are not lucrative that match with their brand you know like and endorsing things that I actually enjoy and I actually would recommend to you guys and then I get ragged for it well I've got to pay for university somehow I need to pay for my car I need to pay tax I need to pay all of these things and you know like you wouldn't rag anybody else for trying to have an income so why would you rag a youtuber for trying to earn some money when that is literally the only source of income that they've got so for me I have ad revenue yeah sure but that's not enough to sustain living do you know what i mean i need to pay for accommodation i need to pay for food i need to pay for all of those fees that you don't think about when you're living at home or whatever and i'm moving away so my parents can only help me so far financially and like any other normal teenager i've got a job which i use to help finance myself and i'm very lucky to be in the situation where that job pays very well and where i can save my money and yes i like to travel and yes i like to buy nice things but i do save the gra the gra grand majority of my money goes into savings for university and I would not spon I would not do sponsorships if I did not believe in the product so that uni compare app I wish I'd have had last year like I genuinely do I'm not showing it to you being like oh like I really really you know love this app but then never use it of course i can't use it loads because i'm already i've already applied to uni but my cousins are using it like family friends i recommended it to them because it's such a good app and i've kept it myself on my phone to look up my degree because it has more information on my degree than i could find myself so it's just one of those things where i don't see why anyone would have a problem with a youtuber doing a sponsored video if that sponsored video is genuine the same thing goes for all of the other sponsored videos i've done on this channel there is not a single one you will find on this channel that has not been a genuine product that i've loved freedom for example look at my skin apart from this little thing here it's clear why because i've been using freedom and i've been using the products for six months now and i love them and I've used them before, they're a trusted brand, hence I signed the contract with them because I knew that I would like their products and that they would work because I've used them before. It's just things like that, you know, like the Unite students as well, like that is a really, really good campaign. They have so many good blog posts on their website. Why would I not want to show you guys that? And if I can offer you amazing products, deals, everything like that, and also be able to save for university, I don't really see how this is negatively impacting anyone. Fair enough, when I started my channel, like, in the first couple of years, yeah, I did a couple of brand deals that perhaps I was, like, not the biggest fan of, like, I don't use the products now, but I never, ever did one just for the sake of the money, like... I, so many like McDonald's and the RICS where people are like you're just doing this for the money but my channel is based on jobs, careers, lifestyles and those are genuine alternative routes just because I don't want to become a surveyor doesn't mean that some of my viewers won't and I have never ever on this channel put up a video that I have not been 100% behind that i have not 100 percent agreed with and i just don't see how i'm getting slack me an 18 year old girl that is got is going to be fifty thousand pounds in debt in the next four years when you have youtubers out there that are promoting like slimming pills and things that they don't even use my channel i turn down so many brand deals for my channel if it doesn't fit the if it doesn't fit i'll turn it down i could have made like triple the amount of money that i've been lucky enough to make if i'd have accepted all the brand deals but if i don't think that you guys would enjoy the products or the brand or the company then i won't promote them and the same goes for all of my friends and we were talking about this when we were on holiday it's just so frustrating getting rags for being a sellout when i'm not being funny if you were in the same situation if you were being offered a healthy amount of money to promote a product that you like you're not going to turn that down. I just don't see how any YouTube like viewer that has not done YouTube can ever have a go at a YouTuber who's honestly promoting products that they love for selling out because you've never been in that situation. And if you were lucky enough to be in that situation, which I'm so, so lucky to be in, you would do the same thing. So yeah, I hope that's cleared up why I do sponsored videos. I will never ever do a video that I don't think fits my channel and if you ever see one of those then then you can accuse me of selling out but if you look back on all of my videos I doubt you will find a brand deal that does not sound genuine, that is not from the heart, that you won't find one because I would never do one. So the next thing is body confidence because I posted a couple of bikini pictures while I was in Madrid on holiday with Liv and Molly and Nu and Lizzie and everyone was like oh my gosh like you're so confident with your body like how do you do it number one 
I absolutely have major issues with body confidence. I was on the verge of tears, like going out of the flat in the bikini, like I didn't want to do it. It was only when I got a high-waisted one that I really felt confident. The first day I was wearing a normal bikini and we took photos and my stomach just looked pudgy and I just cried because I looked so not what I would want to look like. And I admit it, I've gained weight over the last three years. My figure has filled out, my thighs are bigger, like my stomach's not as toned as it used to be ever since I've quit dancing um, and that's a real struggle for me um, but also I'm so busy with other things that diet has just never really been the top of my priority list. I don't eat unhealthily, I probably have more takeaways than a lot of people um, but I would like to think that I do drink a lot of water, I do you know eat okay. I, I'm not a health like guru or anything um, but I'm, I don't eat takeaways every day, I don't um, the only thing that I eat too much of is carbohydrates, but I do eat a lot of veg and fruit as well, so hopefully it will balance out. Anyway, back to the point. Um, body confidence is not really something that I can talk about because I don't have any confidence in my body. Like, if someone said to me, what is your favourite part of your body? Like, I don't have a favourite part. I don't like my body at all. Um, every single part of it, I just there's something I can find fault with. It's always been like that. I suffered with, re like, b really bad mental health, eating problems when I was like 14, 15. Um, if you see any photos of me from then, I was literally stick thin, but I remember being on holiday in Cyprus and refusing to go out in a bikini because I looked too fat. Whereas now, like, I'm like twice that size and I wish I could be that size again, but it was so unhealthy, like I wasn't eating. I was obsessively counting calories. I have always had a really bad relationship with my body and with food. I've never been confident in the way that I am, especially because most of my friends are slimmer than me. They have sort of Instagram baddie figures. Um, I'm not saying that you shouldn't love your body. If you, if you are bigger than me and you love your body, then I honestly admire you for that. If you're smaller than me and you love your body, go girl, like, and when it, when people comment on my photos like wow your figure's amazing like I just never believe them um I really it took me a lot of confidence to post those bikini pictures because for me I just look awful I look obese and that's not a healthy way to see my body um but I've really always struggled with body confidence I've got better in that I probably wouldn't have posted a picture like that when I was 14 but I still am struggling now more so because I have gained weight and I probably could lose weight if I wanted to but I'm terrified that I will fall back into that really negative dangerous mindset that I had when I was 14 so it's a difficult balance to strike I would just say that I think everyone goes through waves of body confidence like I have times when I feel all right um for me, it's just the summer that's a struggle because you have exposed flesh, like your fat rolls are out, you have cellulite on the back of your thighs, but everybody has it. And like, I have to also deal with the issue in that I have very dark hair. Hair removal has always been a really big issue for me. Like, I'm very hairy, like extremely hairy. Everywhere is hairy. So for me, you know, I'm constantly worrying, like, do I look stubbly? Like, have I got razor burn? Like, it's horrible. Um, summer's always been a big struggle for me, um, but you just have to work through it. I'm probably going to stop talking about this now because it's, it takes a lot for me to talk about body confidence because I really struggle with it. Um, I'm going to cry. I don't want to cry. But yeah, like, it's hard for me to talk about, but that is kind of my situation. So I'm going to move on now because... So the next thing that people asked me to talk about were travel plans. So a lot of you have been sort of asking me like, where, are you, where have you been? Where are you going? Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Come on, um, So I've just got back from Madrid with the girls and oh my days, it was such a lovely holiday. I go on a lot of city breaks and they can usually be quite intense with a lot of sightseeing. But Madrid was very nice because we had a pool we had a rooftop pool um go and watch all of the vlogs like i'll link them all down below um i didn't vlog because i just wanted to just chill and they were all vlogging so i felt like it was fine if i didn't vlog because i could just watch all of theirs back um but we had like a really nice rooftop pool which meant that we could have a kind of a beach sort of holiday where we could sit by the pool and tan i have tanned a little bit guys i'm actually quite impressed um and we could also go out sightseeing so we didn't like it, like stretch ourselves 
too far so we did the park we did the crystal palace we did like road boats um we went to like the puerto del sol and we also did the palace so like we didn't do everything in madrid we didn't do as much as we could have done maybe but i loved it and we spent a lot of time just sitting in restaurants outside like eating like it's it was so laid back and that's what i really liked about it and that we weren't in a rush to get anywhere and i'm usually zipping all over going to see as many sites as you can in one day whereas it was really nice to just chill and be with my favorite people and it was really lovely um with regards to other travel plans i am in london from the 16th to the 19th of july for my friend's queen's guide award if you don't know about like girl guiding it's kind of like a, a youth girls organization in the UK and the Queen's Guide Award is the highest award you can get and you have to organize a residential for it so I am going to London for her residential um, which will actually be so nice I of course I literally spend so much of my time in London but I'm only ever there for meetings or for events it's very rare that I can kind of be a tourist in London so we're going and a few of the girls have never been to London the weather's going to be really nice and I'm kind of excited to just be a bit of a tourist again because I haven't really been been a tourist in London since the last time I went with the guides which is when I was 14 and my YouTube channel hadn't really kicked off yet so for me London's kind of lost its magic and it'll be quite nice to go back I think as a tourist and go do all the touristy things um what else am I doing I'm going to I'm going on a holiday with my family for 12 days at the end of July so from the 21st of July to the 1st of August so we're going on a coach holiday because we just like last time we went to an airport and certain like it just doesn't work for our family basically like we all just get really aggy with each other and whatever so we thought we'd try a coach holiday because we couldn't decide where to go so basically we are going to Lake Garda in Italy for seven days like that's the main bulk of the trip we're staying like on the lake. Um, and visiting like Venice and Verona and all of that sort of stuff. But we are also going through Germany, Austria and Belgium as well. So that kind of satisfied the part of us that wanted to go to like Italy or Spain or France. And then also sort of like some of the more Germanic countries. So that is the family holiday. I'm very excited about that. I'm not going to be vlogging it. But of course you can follow my social medias which are always linked below. And I'll, they'll be all over social media. Um, Sitsi. 10th to the 12th, I will be at Sitsi on the Saturday, yes, I don't know if I'm going on the Sunday, I don't think we are this year, I think we're just going on the Saturday um, for the day, but I will be at Sitsi on the Saturday, but we're having a sort of girly weekend in London, um, me, New, Lydia, um, I don't even know who else is coming, like there's a load of us, um, like Molly, Liv, all of that, Lizzie, blah blah blah, um, and we are sort of staying in Greenwich, which we always like to do, and we're just going to have some time in London again, which is nice, um, so we also have a girls sleepover with the same sort of girls um, just before results day, because stress, and then results day, and then straight after results day, I'm going to Prague for five days with my friends from school, so that will be nice, that's a sort of another girls holiday, um, September, hopefully, I'm going away, um, with like Becky we're, we're kind of talking about it at the moment whether it will happen or not I don't know but so help me god I will be leaving the country in September because I have a whole month off and I do not want to spend a whole month in this country so yeah we're thinking maybe like Gran Canaria or like Corfu or just somewhere like an all-inclusive um which I don't do very often I'm much more of a city break sort of gal but I could do with the time and yeah I have a couple of other trips kind of in the works that I can't really talk about but you will find out about them soon um with regards to other summer plans like that I'm just doing like random stuff like going out for meals going to see people everything like that again if you follow my social medias you'll definitely see all of that but those are my summer plans this year. The second to last thing that people wanted me to talk about was Love Island. So I'm going to make this short and sweet because I'm not going to lie to you. I have not been watching it for a while. So it started on the 4th of June, right? Which was the day before my first exam. And I vowed to myself that I wasn't going to watch it. Because a lot of my exams were morning exams. And I didn't really want to be like thinking about Love Island. And I thought, oh, I'll catch up when I finish exams. So I finished my exams. Um, but I today's and yesterday were the first two days that i've had free like completely free for since like since the end of exams um this july is a bit more chill for me i have a couple of free days whereas june i had no free days whatsoever so i didn't have time to catch up on love island but thankfully when we were in madrid we watched it and what I didn't know what was going on at first, but now I feel like I've reached a point where I can carry on watching. I probably won't understand it all completely, 
but I am watching it. Um, so my first impressions are, obviously remember that I haven't been watching, so it's a stress. I'm not a fan of Alex. I did like him in the first episode, which I did watch, but he, he is a bit slimy. Um, Megan, no, no thank you. I really like Georgia. I like Danny. I like Jack. Um, Josh, no. Adam, no. They're just the sort of boys you'd want to avoid. I feel like Wes did make a mistake with Laura, but at the same time, I feel like Wes is a decent guy that made a mistake rather than Adam, who is now saying that he still has feelings for that Zara chick, even though... He literally left her to just sit outside the villa and wait for him whilst he cracked on with another girl. Uh, who else don't I like? I have no hard feelings towards Adam's new partner. Is it Kaz? Kaz? Kaz, right? And now I sound like Georgia, but I actually don't know the name. Kaz? Is it Kaz? Like, the one that begins with K. Um, I think she was a bit rude to Georgia, but at the same time, like, what can you do? That's what, that's what they're in there for. Um... A lot of them are kind of irrelevant at the moment. I feel like there's too many people in the villa and they need to get rid of some. I like Samira too, um, but apparently she's not that nice. But I've only seen, like, a bit of it, so I don't really know. Um, and yeah, I think that's kind of my opinion on Love Island. I haven't been watching it as much this year. Obviously, my favourite season will always be the season with, like, Marlon, Terry, like, Katie and all of that. That was literally the best season. Um, but I do like this season. Probably my least favourite season, but it's still alright, to be fair. And the last thing I always talk about was the World Cup because uh, it's coming home, but thank you very much. So I did not watch the first three matches, not because I wasn't interested, but because I seemed to be busy on every single one. So I can't remember what I was doing on the first match, but I didn't watch it, but we I think we won the first match. The second one, I was getting my nails done, which are now have grown out, so I've had to paint over them very badly. Um, these are literally the worst nails that I've ever had, but they look all right from a distance, so it's fine. Um, so I couldn't watch it, but the woman next to me was like telling me the score and it kept going up and I was like, I wish I could be watching this match. Um, and the third one, it was my prom, so couldn't watch that one either. But that being said, I did watch the England versus Columbia match and oh my days, like my heart. I don't, I'm not even interested in football. I don't like football. I like, I like, I like the World Cup and that is it. Um, I'm not a big fan of normal football, but I do like the World Cup. Um, and I was just like, <gasps> and we, I, we've never won a penalty shootout, I don't think, so, at the World Cup. So it was really, really amazing to watch. I honestly thought we'd lost. But when the Columbia guy missed that last penalty, I thought, oh my gosh, if he gets this penalty in right now, if Dyer gets his penalty in, like, we're actually through. Um, and I always, like, have been very sceptical of, like, football hooligans that run around screaming, but I became a football hooligan all of a sudden, like, woo! Um, do I think we'll win? I don't know. I hope we do. I think the country could do with it. Mainly just because of the economy. Like, I feel like a lot of local pubs have been suffering. And I think the heat wave with a combination of England doing well in the World Cup could be very good for them. Um, also, I just feel like we haven't won it for ages. And it would be a summer to remember if we've got this lovely heat wave and England won the World Cup. I think that would be really nice. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. So, this video has gone through a lot of tones. It's gone from me kind of being confused to being angry to being excited i don't even know but i hope you enjoyed this video if you did wow i can't breathe if you did be sure to subscribe comment down below if you have any video ideas make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and i will see you very very soon with another new video bye guys Mwah.